Hello one and welcome back to part two of the trigger landing page and today we're going to be building the get started page which is our login form. If you need the link to the repository then you can head over to github to my profile and the repository is called trigger. The link is going to be in the description as well. And so what I've done is in my terminal I have navigated to my trigger work folder and I've just started my development server by saying npm start and this is what is running on localhost 3000 which is this right here now one thing that you'll notice is that in the design i changed the background color so that instead of being a dark uh, a black color instead of a black color i have this dark gray color i think this looks much better in terms of even for this i think it looks much better and that is what we're going to be working with so i have my folder open in vs code and I'm just going to go inside my index.css, okay? And then inside here, I'm going to change this to 111H27 because that's the dark gray background color from Tailwind CSS. I should mention that I want to add Tailwind because this is turning out to be a bigger project than I anticipated. And we're also going to install React Router DOM uh, to handle our internal routing. So let me save this and it should reset in my browser right here let me place this to the right and this to the left come on reload okay so as this reloads it's taking quite a while i don't know what's happening it doesn't seem to be a problem with the server as this reloads i just want to head over into cdnjs.com so that i can grab the tailwind cdn so tailwind i'm going to copy this link tag and then go inside my public folder let me make this full screen and then inside my index.html and I'm just going to place this below right here. And then I'm going to change this title to trigger, just like that. And then I'm going to remove this comment. We don't need it. And remove this comment as well. Okay. And then we're going to remove this as well. And now that I've remembered this, I still want to change this theme color to 111827. And then I'm going to change this description into learn math and trigonometry online there we go so save this and it should reset if it doesn't reset then i'm just going to restart my server because this is kind of annoying so let me restart my server let's say npm start okay and i think i can close this but let's just leave it open in fact let me open this on localhost 3000 okay and let's begin building so the first thing that i'm going to do actually is i'm going to create a new component actually not not inside components but i'm going to create a new folder okay so there we go so i'm going to create, create a new folder here called pages and inside pages i'm going to add get started.js okay and then inside pages still because we're going to add more pages i want to add an index.js file and i'm going to explain why and then inside components as well i want to create a new file and say index.js okay so i'm going to close these two index files and then inside in inside the get started i'm going to say underscore rfc once again this is coming from an extension called ES7 React Redux and GraphQL React Native Snippets. So you can install this extension right here. And then for the return, what I'm just going to say for now is just an H1 that says get started. Okay. So because we don't have React Water DOM installed yet, then I'm just going to comment out these two components and then I'm going to render out get started instead. Okay. There we go. And it imports it from pages get started. And we're going to structure these imports uh, just a bit uh, in the future so that we're going to have this on the screen, okay? So I've disabled this because we don't have React Router DOM set up yet. So inside Get Started, what I want to do is, re uh, let me just check what I had in the design, I've forgotten. So we have our image here to the left and then we have our form to the right, okay? So let's do that, let's do that right away. I know this image is available to us. So what I'm going to do is at the top, I'm going to say import, um, hero from dot slash dot dot slash actually is it dot slash and it's called hero dot svg if i do remember correctly and then inside here i'm going to return this section and then inside this section i'm going to have an article and then inside this article is going to be my image 
and this image the source is coming from hero like that the art is going to be hero and the title is going to be hero like so fantastic and then below this article i want to render another article and then this article is going to have our form now this form um i'm not sure how i'm going to do it yet but it's going to be our kind of login form where we're going to do some authentication and then we're also going to add the ability to log in with google because it's much easier these days so this first one is going to have actually this is, should be a label come on i can type so label this is going to be for username okay and then below this we're going to have an input with a type of text with a type of text with a name of username with an id of username like so and then below this we're going to have another label uh, with an html for email like so and then we're going to have an input with a type of email with a name of email with an id of email and let's have a placeholder that says enter your email address dot 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 and then let's have this as placeholder as well let's add a placeholder that says choose a username and then let's set this to required okay and then let's set this to required as well and i've just remembered that i need a password input as well so html for let's call this password below this label let's have an input with a type of password like so with a name of password with an id of password with a placeholder text that says choose a password and then set it to required as well and then finally below this we're going to have an input with a type of submit which is our submit button that says uh, the value is going to be submit as well and actually not that's actually it because this is not technically a button and you know what this is not what i wanted actually because this would mean that i would have to style it out again so instead what i'm going to do is create a div with a class of cta and then inside here we're going to have a button with a class of btn because remember we have a button component and this button component is a div with a class of cta with a button with a class of btn and that's our green button so i just want to reuse that and you know what what am i doing actually because instead of doing all that i can just render out the button i can render out the button uh but then again i'm not thinking because this is not a submit button so let's do what we had <laughs> sorry for that let's do this and then we can have the type for this to submit there we go so let's save this let's see what we have on the screen and we're going to have this and of course it auto fills that which i don't like uh so let let's go inside each of these inputs here here and here let's add an attribute called autocomplete set this to off okay and i'm adding multiple cursors by clicking on where i want the cursor to be and then holding down the alt key like so and clicking and clicking and you can add multiple cursors anywhere that you want okay so that's that so let's save this let's reload this and it doesn't reload of course it doesn't reload. So let me add the attribute here so autocomplete set this to off okay so i don't know why it does that sometimes though and this is our button right here but this button uh it doesn't have the text okay so let's say log in there we go so that's our button text right there fantastic so let's begin styling this out let's go inside our where is it this is our section give this section a class name of padding all round of five remember we linked tailwind just so that it becomes easier to style all of this go inside this image give this a class name of width dash 9 over 12 which is about what is it 75 percent right okay and then once again let's say mx auto which will center it there like so and then let's say margin bottom of 10 save that and you know what we actually need our header so let's go go back into app.js and instead of commenting both of these out let's just comment the hero section out so that we're going to have our header fantastic and then inside here let's go back inside here let's go inside the form right here let's give this a class name of flex and justify um center yeah justify center there we go and then of course flex direction should be columns so of flex call like so and then let's go inside the each of these inputs so i'm going to add multiple classes once again so right click right here 
hold down the alt key and click this and on this give all of this a class name of margin bottom of five of rounded and of a slight box shadow padding on the y of two padding on the x of six okay and then let's say that the text should be green dash 500 let's add a bit of letter spacing on the text so tracking wide and then let's change the text of the placeholder so placeholder dash green dash 500 save this let's see and we're going to have that looking fantastic isn't it and then once again i've noticed that a mistake that i've done each of these labels should have some text inside so inside here let's have username so there we go username this should be email okay and then this should be password there we go so that we're going to have this so all we need to do is just scale this up on bigger screens so that this would appear on the left and then this should have a background color of white which i've actually forgotten to add let's go back into the article give this a class name of bg white okay we're going to have this not the best looking ui because now we can't read our labels okay so let's go inside the label right here and then here and then finally here give this a class name of text green dash 500 and you know what not text green 500 let's do text gray dash 900 so that it it kind of matches with this because this color the text that we have here is the same color as the background text okay so let's see let's see the labels probably have a bit of spacing so that they push down as just a bit so let's imagine bottom one okay and then let's go back into our let's go back into our thing our thing which is where our article sorry let's give this a padding all round of five and a rounded border and a box shadow which is not going to be visible but it i just like having it right there okay and we're going to have this so this is our login form and then we need to have our google button below this and i've just remembered that i don't have that button yet so in order to fix that let's say let's install react icons probably overkill but you know npm install react dash icons okay let's install that and then below this form is it below the form yeah below this form let's have a div okay this div is going to have a paragraph that says log in with like so and then we're going to have an icon here that says if a google that comes from react icons so it's finished installing so let's import it at the top and we're going to say import as a named import so import fa google that's why you have it in curly brackets this is coming from react icon slash fa so let's save this let's see what we have on the screen reload this and we're going to have nothing okay so maybe fa google doesn't exist let me just confirm let's search for google let's use this one okay fc google it's fc google so fc change this to fc change this to fc save this close this and reload and we should see it on the screen right around there okay fantastic and i can't see my text that's because it's white so let me change this give this a class name of text gray dash 900 there we go give this div a class name of margin top of 10 pushed away from the login button and then let's say margin bottom of two pushed away from the paragraph uh sorry not that's not the right thing to do actually this should have uh where is it now oh, wait a minute i'm styling the wrong thing so let's tell the paragraph so let's say flex so that the icon is go, going to go right there and then let's say item center center so that it's going to be positioned properly if i can just type it there we go let's tell this icon give this a class name of text dash xl uh come on xl let's say margin left of 10. there we go login with google and probably this would link to somewhere else but we're going to add that in later when we start dealing with our logic for the kind of backend we're not really going to create a full and uh, a full-on backend 
so let's do that let me just increase this to 4xl make it just a bit bigger there we go you can add facebook and other stuff inside here but technically what i want to do is i want to use something called passport.js so passport.js and you can go through this if you want uh, I, I i've used it before and i really liked it so that's what i want to use now let's 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 just scale this up let's scale this up okay and let me see what media query i used so that we can just be more uniform we have 992 for min width okay so instead of having this at 992 i actually want to change this to 1024 because 10 it doesn't have 992 pixels it has 10 1024 and i want to be uniform across all the pages now let's go inside our article uh is there our article nope it is our section let's say that for large screens which is 1024 pixels then want this to be displayed as a grid and grid columns should be two with a gap of five let's see let's increase this to here there we go so this is how it looks at 992 pixels and remember that we limited this remember how oh you know what you know what i forgot to change this tailwind has a class of container okay in our app.js we also have a class of container so this technically is going to mess up with our styling so what i want to do is change this to wrapper okay and then go inside our css and change this to wrapper okay just so that we don't conflict with tailwind uh, styling oh and i should mention that this is uh, the reason why this is black is because it's autofill but if you just try to change anything then uh, it's going to be uh, the green text that we added in and that is what we wanted and the same for this and the same for this okay so let's increase this image back to 100 percent let's go inside get started where we have this for large screens we're going to say with set this to auto and you know what not auto really but full which is just take it back to 100 percent of the image let's increase this gap to let's say that for xl screens then the gap should be 20 let me see how large that is that's fine let's go inside the section and i'm going to say for large screens i'm going to say display flex uh actually you know what that's that won't work that won't work that's it that is going to conflict with this for large screens uh let me go before this for large screens let me say margin top of 10 which will push away just a bit from this so that we're going to have this and then what i want to do is i want to add a class here i want to add a class here on large screens that is called items center which will shrink this down a bit there we go there we go fantastic so that it doesn't you know introduce a whole white space that we don't really quite need okay so we're going to have this so login with google login with everything and da 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 now what i want to do is let me see um yeah this should probably be a bit more uniform let me see if we can fix that let's go inside our get started js and then let's go inside this let's say bg of gray dash 50. hmm okay so let's not do that here let's say uh let me say bg white let me test something okay so this is bg white and then let's go inside our form not our form but our article let's remove this white from the article which will remove this and then let's also remove the box shadow from the article so that we were no longer going to see that okay and then let me go back inside here let's say add a box shadow rounded and a uh sorry a body radius of rounded and a slight box shadow and then let me go inside this article give this a class name of get underscore underscore started like so and then let's go inside our index.css let's target that class so right here let's say dot get underscore underscore started then let's say bg white uh, actually what am i doing let me say background color set this to white of course but i want this white to have an opacity of about come on an opacity of about 20 percent let's see how this looks and you know what what am i doing <laughs> um let's move this let's say uh, hashtag 666 like so and then change this to have an opacity of 20 percent there we go there we go there we go so it's almost coming along but not quite yet okay so i can see 
some issues let me just scale this up down first of all and what we can do is inside this article hmm we're going to deal with this for a moment css can be confusing sometimes and you know what instead of this margin top only being here let me just add it full on for all devices like so hmm so probably adding this bg white here wasn't a good idea right it probably wasn't a good idea but then adding it here would be a good idea right bg white okay and this what's this margin this margin is this right okay so we remove that margin fantastic what we can do instead is here we can add a padding bottom of 10 so we have that fantastic and then you know what let's just say padding y of 10 so that we also have padding on the top of the image right there fantastic and then here instead of this border radius being on the top as well we can just say rounded dash bottom so that there's not going to be a border radius on the top but on the bottom it's going to be there like so and then let's add a border radius on this on this thingy right here so let's say rounded dash top okay so it applies it applies and then when we scale it up we're going to need to do a few things okay which means i'm going to have to remove this item center okay and then i'm going to have to remove this gap of 20 right 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 why why is there still a gap gap of five actually well it's right there i mean come on so gap of five we're going to have that and then what we need to change now is for large screens then we need to say that for large screens then the rounded should be on the left wait is this the form this is the form so the rounded should be on the right okay and then for this right here then we say for large screens then the rounded the body area should be on the left okay so we are going to have this and then let's add a padding all round of this where did we have a padding right here so let's say that for large screens let's have a padding all round of 10 which will just do that look at that became fantastic and then let's move this form downwards okay so let's go inside here inside this article actually not inside the article but inside the form let's say that for last friends let's have a margin top of 20 of 10 actually 10 let's say 20 so that it's almost the same as the image and we have that let's have a padding on the um x-axis of 10 push this inwards a bit of course and i need to add it instead of adding it here let me add it here that says lodging on pad screen should be uh what i said padding on large screens should be 10 i reverse the words so that this also pushes in once okay and we have that look at this form looking amazing looking fantastic now probably this contrast isn't all that great right this contrast isn't all that great for the inputs so what we can do is we can go inside this input so right here the first one click on this the second one hold down the alt key, alt key and click on this we can have a border bottom and a border border gray of 900 okay let's see how this looks so that we can't have this so instead of this saying border b let's say border dash 2 make it just a bit thicker uh border b dash 2 that's the class that's the class there we go we're going to have this and then let's say rounded let's remove this class of rounded remove this class here remove this class oops and then remove this class of the input as well okay so that i'm going to have that so that this line doesn't look as if, as if it's curved and then let's remove the box shadow so remove this and remove this and remove this i'm selecting them by using ctrl and d okay so let's remove those and we're going to have this okay i think this looks much better this looks much better in my opinion probably we need to remove uh, this kind of padding we need to move that padding let me just see how it looks on smaller screens first of all yeah let's remove the padding let's remove the padding on the input and the padding on the input is the padding x of six so let me just select this and then ctrl d to select the next one and then ctrl d to select the next one and then you can remove this okay so that we're going to have that it's a bit more uniform bit more readable and much more tolerable and that is our get started page so in the next video what i want to do is set up our react router 
because I want to be able to navigate between these two pages because what will happen is because I've disabled this if I enable it once again then this happens so we have our hero section and then we have our form menu immediately and we don't want that and of course the reason why this is inside just a bit is because we have a padding on the X of our section so let's remove that as well a lot of tweaking here and there but you know let's say for that screens then the padding should be zero a lot of tweaking but you know it still works and of course remember that we added a border radius manually here and we have added this using tailwind so that's why it kind of doesn't jive all that much okay so that is going to be it now what i want to do in the next video is i want to install react router dom and then i want to also implement it because uh, and by the way i should mention that the reason why this our logo now looks smaller is because of tailwind it resets some of the styling okay so don't worry about this we're going to fix this when we're dealing with the react router dom and dealing with our navigation Okay, so that's going to be it for this video and see you in the next video.